Hello everybody and welcome to Grid 2 Uncovered live stream number 4. Um, we've got some new information for you guys today. Uh, we're going to be talking, finally talking about the multiplayer uh, aspect of the side of the game. Um, joining me this week's live stream we have Alex, uh, Alex, Lee <laughs> and <Hello>. Ian <laughs> uh, from RaceNet. How are you doing guys? Yeah, Pretty good. good. Um, man in the wheel this week is Mr. Tyso. Say hello Mr. Tyso. And also, man, in the chat box, we've got Ben. Um, if you've got any questions or anything like that that you want to ask the team a little bit later on, um, just fire them into the chat box. We'll be picking them up and we'll be taking questions uh, shortly after. Um, but what we've got to show for you today, we want to show off, um, we want to talk about RaceNet, really. Uh, it's something that we haven't spoken about before, so we're going to be taking you all the way through RaceNet, um, talking about the multiplayer. We're going to touch on some of the customization that you can do in the game as well. Um, following on from that, we're going to be showing you guys a brand new track, which is Dubai, uh, and we're going to be using the live route system, uh, something that we showed off last week for the first time, and you guys really enjoyed it, so we'll be showing that off again. Um, then we'll be heading back to the Algarve, um, which we showed you last week. Again, you guys really enjoyed that, so uh, we'll be showing off some new new cars over on the Algarve. And then we've got a brand new event, uh, which is Paris Checkpoint, um, which will be in the Koenigsegg. Okay. Right, so then, I'll start with you, Ian. Um, just, if you could fill us in, just give everybody a very brief sort of background on RaceNet and what it is. Yes, so um, RaceNet's been in Visa for quite some time now. We started uh, at the showdown, then on to F1 2012 and F1 Race Stars. Uh, for Grid, we're taking the beat tanks completely off. It's going to be a full burn service. Um, I think it's probably a bit better place to go through some of these sorts. Yeah, I mean, there. so it's been a year now since we first launched. Um, and we've kind of been looking at kind of what's going on, making sure the system's there, kind of support what we're doing, making sure we can pick up on what the players are playing and what modes they're enjoying. And I think uh, with Grid 2, we've, we've definitely kind of moved the service on and definitely kind of improved it wholesale. Cool. Okay, right. So, um, I think I'm going to hand over to you now, Lee, and you yeah. can walk us through um, Grid 2 and RaceNet. Multiplayer racing, really fine. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of talk you through uh, the multiplayer and how it kind of connects with RaceNet. So the bits and pieces are kind of with multiplayer as a whole and that sort of thing. So yeah, we'll take you through each different part. So starting off, um, Grid 2's multiplayer is going to be fully independent to the single player career this time. Um, we decided to do this kind of so we can focus on uh, both modes uh, so they're entirely separate, um, creating possible better experiences for the two. Um, with multiplayer, you're going to have 12 player races. Uh, that's 12 players and 12 cars, so that's an improvement over the first grid. Um, across a range of game modes, we we'll also have AI backfilling in this time as well to fill out the grid. Um, we're also going to kind of be running through areas we've worked on to improve the on-track experience, uh, better anti-cheat measures, uh, plus obviously the race net features, which we're really interested in. So in Grid 2, uh, every race is going to count. You're going to be earning an XP and cash uh, rewards. As you more uh, kind of earn more XP, you're going to be able to unlock more cars and more upgrades, and you're going to be using your cash to do that too. Uh, so every race you race in is going to every race is going to be important to win it. Get a podium, you're going to get more XP and more cash. Get eighth, tenth, twelfth. Obviously, you're not going to get as much, so you've got to make sure you're carrying on with that. We're also going to be integrating RaceNet kind of much more than we've ever done before. Uh, it's kind of a big thing we want to push for this year and kind of upgrade that social platform. So uh, I think Ian's going to take you through kind of where we are with RaceNet and Grid 2. Yeah, so um, so with uh, RaceNet, what we're going to try and do is make it the beating heart of many of Grid 2's multiplayer modes. Um, we're aiming to improve the multiplayer experience within the game overall. Uh, and one thing we're really keen to do with RaceNet is extend it beyond the console experience. Um, with RaceNet, uh, we're going to try and keep you up to date with the latest activity in Grid 2, wherever you are, 24-7. Um, the service will be fully accessible on desktop, tablets and mobile browsers. Uh, we're also going to be looking at a mobile app so you can stay even more connected to the game. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Lena to run you through uh, some of the deeper features of RaceNet and yeah, Grid 2 multiplayer. Go through some of the modes. Get next one. There you go. Playlist and custom. So there's two ways to uh, get into races, into multiplayer. We've got kind of playlists and custom uh, races. 
Um, so 12 players um, with the option of 12 unique cars across a wider range of events, all accessible via online playlist and custom events. With online playlist, this is pretty much your kind of pick up and play uh, mode. So you're going to be able to get into the race straight away. We've kind of got three different ways of accessing this. First off, you've got race, which is the traditional kind of first past the post uh, experience. So if you just want to race outright, then you can do that straight away in our, our kind of race playlist option. Then we've got alternative, uh, and this is going to contain the, kind of the race types such as drift, such as tef, trek point, you've got toge in there, face off, and you've got in endurance as well. So it's kind of the more kind of bespoke stuff apart from the race. Then if you just want to tackle everything, we've got an everything option. So that's going to be a combined playlist that kind of brings together the alternative and the race ones as well, meaning you can just get involved with all the modes all the time. Uh, with custom event, uh, this makes kind of all uh, configurations possible. You can set exactly the session you want, so you're going to be able to compete with any car on any track, and you're also going to kind of find a wide range of tracks to play the games on. And also, kind of new to this grid series, so apart from these two modes we've got here, we've also got this new async challenge mode, and it's called uh, Global Challenge. That's going to be uh, uniquely powered by RaceNet, so Ian's going to take you through that one too. Um, yeah, so the rival systems, um, quite an interesting one. Um, one thing we're, oh sorry? Global Challenge, but. I've got a challenge, where are we? Pay attention, 007. Got <laughs> a challenge. Where's that? Uh, I'll do that then. It's not on my list of things to talk about. <laughs> it's all falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that one. Um, so yeah, with uh, Global Challenge, it's going to be an asynchronous mode. Uh, so it's kind of a competition in setting scores and setting times. So you're going to be able to compete with opponents even kind of when they're not at the console. So you'll set a time, go away, obviously your opponent's going to come, set a better time, and it's constantly that back and forth nature we're trying to do with the Global Challenge. Every single week, uh, RaceNet's going to send... Uh, nine new events down into the game for you to undertake and this is going to cover kind of a variety of modes we've got drift mode in here we've got power lap in here we've got checkpoint and we've also got another mode that fails for me and i'm trying to remember it there's another mode in there as well uh, but so we've got four modes and then we're also going to be mixing up uh, locations and cars so there's going to be constantly new challenges every single week and the idea with this is we kind of want to move away from the idea of kind of that legacy leaderboard which is always difficult to top so we're going to have these weekly leaderboards when you're competing for kind of XP and cash. And the idea for that is we just want it to, these combinations, you may be used to a specific car on a specific track or specific setup. The idea is we want to kind of challenge everyone to set those times. So one week will be a different car and you've got to change your driving style to suit that car and suit that track. And it gives everyone a chance to hit that kind of number one position. And that's kind of what we want to do with this as well. So as well as kind of competing with these players, compete with your friends, you're also going to compete with uh, RaceNet rivals, Grid 2 rivals. And that's kind of a brand new system. Uh, I think Ian's got kind of all the details on rivals for you. Yeah, so um, with the rival system, uh, one thing we're trying to really do is make sure you've always got someone to race with. Um, so the rival system is going to be matching you with opponents across the world within Grid 2 multiplayer. You'll have six rivals active at any time, um, and we've got different types of rivals. So you've got a weekly rival, and that's going to be based on your skill level, your race style, uh, we're going to try and keep it within the time zone as well, so there stands a good chance that that person will be online with you at the same time, so you can actually race together. Um, custom rivals, you'll be able to go and set those parameters yourself. So you can go in, you can pick, you know, do you want to pay with someone with similar XP, a little bit more XP, a little bit less, um, and also various other parameters on that. Um, added to that, uh, you can also add your friend just directly to be a social rival. So I can race against you if what? Yeah, so if we're friends on Xbox Live, friends on RaceNet, uh, we just go in, click, yep, yeah, Adley, um, more rivals, we're good to go. So yeah, it's um, something we're really interested in here at Codemasters, something we, um, when we were looking at the, the whole rival system, something that we wanted to get into the game was, as I say, get, you get to always have something to race with and so people can compete together. Yeah, I think the key thing is, say your mate goes on holiday for two weeks and he's not playing the game anymore, you've got nobody to compete against. But with this rival system, you're always going to have this new person to compete against. And it's going to be somebody you don't even know. It's going to be kind of somebody just from the grid to kind of community going to be challenged against that week. So it's kind of making those connections and constantly kind of adding those people. And you never know, those people who are signed by your weekly and custom setups could well, well end up being in your social rivals, being an Xbox friend, being a PlayStation friend. It's all, all that's together. So kind of building that community up a little bit with the rivals feature. Yes, yeah, so another thing you're about to do is if you've had a rival, 
um, they'll automatically be going to your previous rivals list. So if you had a really good rivalry with somebody, you can jump back in, add them again. Straight it's away. A social rivalry. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So with those rivals too, uh, if you beat them on track, we're going to give you kind of an XP and cash boost as well, almost like you know, the top dog kind of setup. So if you take on a rival in the game on the track, you're going to get an XP and cash boost for beating them too. So that's more than what you normally yeah, get? Yeah, normally, because I have an additional boost on top of yeah. everything else you're going to get in the game, you're also going to get that. And that also kind of leads us on to the other th system kind of that RaceNet's going to power, and that's the followers system. So kind of one thing we were key to do uh, with Grid, uh, Grid 2 and RaceNet, and RaceNet as a whole really, is kind of extend this experience beyond the console and kind of create something that exists purely on the website. And kind of RaceNet followers is what this is. So in the main game, in career mode, you can earn a fan base and you get more famous as you go through. But with the multiplayer, you're going to be earning RaceNet followers in the same sort of way. And it's kind of your, your mark of fame or your mark of success. So the more successful you are in Grid 2 multiplayer, uh, the more race net followers you're going to accrue. So we've got this idea. It's got, basically think of it as your uh, point system on race net for competing with your friends and uh, your rivals as well. So you're going to be able to earn um, race net followers for doing standard stuff like uh, kind of winning races and stuff like that. It's going to add to your kind of rivalry uh, XP. So you're competing every week with your rival, uh, and whoever comes out top in playlists and custom events is going to get a followers boost. As well as this, um, you're going to be able to steal followers or kind of win followers over from your rival. So in the same sense that kind of uh, fame and people follow the most uh, popular driver or the most successful driver, if you take on your rival and you beat their time in an event or you beat them in a rivalry, you're not only going to win a followers boost from racing that itself, you're also going to steal a proportion of those followers across. So if I beat Ian, you're gonna steal, I'm going to steal some of you. I'm going to steal... Gonna steal, yeah. I'm gonna steal one of two of your fans. No, you're going to steal my, a lot of my fans because they're very fickle. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is that we kind of create this back and forth. So with the uh, global challenge mode, for example, um, if you set a time, say Ian sets a time, and then I go in and, and beat his time, I will steal so some of his followers over to me. But then he's got that weak period to go in and try and win them back. Not only will he win them back, he'll steal part of my followers. So until that event closes at the end of the week those followers can go back and forth between us but at the end that's it Ian's lost his followers to me always and that's always, how it works always me that's <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen um, we've also got uh, this objective system uh, that links in with race now and that's going to fuel the followers uh, system as well so you can think of objectives like your Xbox achievements or your Playstation trophies their targets their milestones if you hit all these then obviously you're going to get follower boosts and we're keen to kind of keep expanding the objective system as well we've got an initial set of objectives that will launch with the game but then we're looking to update them as we go so kind of getting community feedback on objectives people like to see and as long as we can do them and, and we can see them for the date we get from the game we definitely want to try and integrate some of the more interesting ones and try and get the community involved in setting some objectives and then link that back in with the idea of uh, fame and followers sounds awesome sounds good um, so kind of with all this competition and all this rivalry uh, the team also have been like the grid 2 team have been massively hard at work of trying to update this experience and make this experience as good as it can be and uh, working on the griefing system. And I think it's been talked about before about how we've improved the collision detection and added collision detection ratings in events as well. So what this allows us to do is if you like racing clean and you don't like getting to the first corner and everybody's slamming into you, you just want to race clean around the track. That has happened a lot it's in happened. a lot of the things that I've been playing Exactly. With. If you, I, much to Mr. Tyso's annoyance. <laughs> if, if you would rather play with like-minded individuals like yourself, you want a nice clean race experience, uh, you're going to be able to do that um, via the custom events. So because these collision ratings can get set, if you just want uh, kind of low impact races where there isn't much griefing or anything like that, you can set that up in custom event and, and race against like-minded players. Obviously, if at the other end of the spectrum and all you want to do is crash into people, you can do that too. So that's provided as part of kind of this improvement in the impact system. Um, we've also made it so if you spin the car around and drive it straight down the track, you'll ghost out. So no longer will you be able to cause grief to other players that way. So same goes for if you park your car straight up against a corner and try and block it. You'll ghost out, meaning that everybody's race experience isn't ruined because you just want to mess around. So when Ian spins out and doesn't notice he's driving around the wrong way, it's yeah, not going to cause, any, gonna any, cause any problem. Yeah, so that's kind I'm of... actually a pretty good driver, you know. You make yourself <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah. I'm not too bad. Uh, but then, I mean, and then also, I think it was talked about in the, the recent Q&A, this idea of a uh, cheat detection system to pick up when you corner cut. So the reason kind of this has been done is before in grid one we had kind of tire walls blocking corners and 
sometimes you'd have a driver who slightly gets that corner a little bit wrong, snags on that corner, crashes, and everyone else crashes into the back of them, and it ruins everybody's experience. This time round, those tyre walls kind of have been removed, and uh, we've opted this cheat detection system. So if it detects you've gained an advantage, kind of time-wise, via that corner, it will slow you down for a brief period of time. Again, it's not kind of impacting the race experience too too much for the individual, and ultimately not ruining the race experience for everybody else in the race with you as well. So you guys have done like a lot of work on trying yeah, to balance the, that. I mean, and make yeah, it the fair. design team have been kind of working on that as we go. So it's it's, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty. It basically makes it a lot better than before, where it's one person would crash, everyone would crash into them, and that's it. The race is ruined for everyone. Yeah. So kind of that brings us on to uh, the idea of customization next. So I'm going to talk briefly about. So, uh, customization in Grid 2 is going to come in uh, two forms. We've got the livery editor and we've also got vehicle upgrades too. So, we've improved the livery editor wholesale uh, to include a, a, a kind of range of options. There's new paint types in there. We've got matte, gloss, metallic, we've got flip, we've got pearlescent. There's a whole range of colours too, and we're offering far, you know, more sponsors and customizable wheels too, so size, colour and style on the wheels too. So it's been vastly overhauled and improved for this. Um, the main thing we kind of wanted to do with the livery system this time around and, and, and kind of continue on from the first grid was make it kind of ex make it as accessible as possible. So you can go in there, create something really good in double quick time, and then you're straight back in the race with an awesome livery designed and it's, it's ready to go kind of thing. So it's all about kind of quick in and out and set your liveries and get racing again. Yeah, I mean, this one that we're building here, I mean, this... This is like it's like two minutes, sort of start to finish. To yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 really quick. It's I think that's kind of what we were going to do. The I mean the the, the art team and that kind of worked really well, and there's some awesome things you can create in here. Um, so yeah, it's it's more about kind of quickly and make some changes. But then if you want to sit there and, and go into depth and change color types and change your paint types, so if you can do that as well, so you can get results either way. So, I mean. In addition to this, we've got the vehicle upgrades, and again, like the livery editor, we've taken the approach that upgrading allow you to improve your car in moments rather than hours. So it's more about kind of applying these packs, getting the results, and racing them straight away. Um, there's no more kind of cases of uh, adding a part and fitting it for finding it kind of negatively affects your car and stuff. So you can get by upgrade packs for your engine, for your drivetrain, and for your handling too. And uh, if you upgrade kind of a car enough, you're going to be able to compete that car against higher tiers as well. So you can take a car like uh, the BMW uh, E30 M3, and then you can race it against a current car like the BMW Motorsports 320 uh, Touring car as well. So you can upgrade these cars and move them up tiers too. And cars are going to visibly change as well. So you're going to get fatter wheel arches, lower ride height, and improved spoilers too. So that's all adds together. It's a really good system, nice and accessible, nice and easy to use, and uh, you know allows players to get straight back in the action after they made their upgrades. On to Ian. Yeah. So um, something else we're looking to do, Rice Nets, uh, obviously make this a really social service. Um, something you'll be able to do directly from the game is upload clips of your races. Uh, to do this, uh, all you'll need to do is simply connect your RaceNet account with your YouTube account and you're ready to start sharing clips. And you can just do that straight from the game? Yep, yeah, that's straight from the game. Yeah, yeah. It's got, the only RaceNet connectivity you've got to do is hook your RaceNet account up with a YouTube account. Once you've done that, you're ready to go. Select your clip in game, date, and then click the upload button and you're done. So much the same way that we've done in the past. Yeah, pretty much games. the same sort of thing really, yeah. yeah. Um, we've also kind of got the ability to uh, post those uh, videos to direct to your Facebook wall and your Twitter feed now as well. Same sort of process, if you hook your uh, Twitter account up, your Facebook account up with your RaceNet account, in game, you're going to get the option to uh, upload that straight to uh, those two services. Yeah, they also go on, on to RaceNet as well, so we'll have a, a video section where the community will go and check out each of those videos and stuff. So we can like we can check out your videos and, and Ben's videos and yeah, like, have yeah, a look yeah, around. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So also with that, kind of the more views you get and the more likes you get, that video will kind of climb up the charts a little bit because we're basically pulling them across based on those. All oh, right, so there's like a little bit of a meta game. Yeah, there's a little bit it. of a meta game again. It links back in with the whole followers and fame kind of thing we've got there as well. So you know, the more likes you get, the more likelihood your uh, video is going to be there on uh, RaceNet. That is some impressive features. You guys have been very hard at work. Yeah. But it's yeah. been long evenings and <laughs> cold winter nights. <laughs> right. Okay. Guys. Multiplayer racing redefined. Pretty much. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, 
Thank you very much for everybody who's watching the live stream. Um, we hope you enjoyed sort of everything you've heard about what we're doing with RaceNet and multiplayer. Um, we think it's a bit uh, it's time we showed you guys a race now. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to Dubai on the live routes. Um, we're going to show you this event sort of twice. Um, the reason behind it is it's just to show you the difference in how live routes works. Um, what live routes does is basically you set down um, a time period or a distance that you want to be able to travel uh, on the race and the race will generate randomly as you're driving through the event. Um, so when you do one lap where you took a left on the first lap, you might end up taking a right uh, on this second lap. And literally every time you play the race, it's going to be different. Um, it's something that you'll be able to do in the single player side of the game. It's something that you'll also be able to do in the multiplayer as well. So you won't have to worry about having that one mate who's always really good on Dubai because with live routes, it completely mixes things up. and. It keeps things really sharp and everybody on their toes. We've seen a bunch of people play this and go left when they should have gone. Yeah, I've done it many a time. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one really nasty corner that sometimes throws a hairpin in on yeah. you and it's like everybody hits the wall. Um, so yes, we'll pop over to Mr. Tyso. Um, this is Dubai for the live routes. We will be taking questions uh, if you guys have got any questions about... Uh, uh, about sort of anything that you've seen, whether it be the live routes or if you've got any questions about the multiplayer stuff that we've just been talking about. Um, we'll keep quiet now and let you enjoy the race and be back soon.
There you go, guys. Uh, that was our first event of the evening. Uh, that was Dubai Live Roots. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to sort of load that back up again um, straight from the menu. We're not going to be fiddling with any settings. Hopefully, it should spit out a very different race for us for you guys to see. Um, a couple of questions that we've been getting over in the chat. Uh, there's a lot of you asking what sort of steering wheels that Grid 2 is going to be supporting. Um, Ben's going to drop a link into the comments um, for you guys to take a look at. Um, it's also over on the IGN um, wiki page which we've set up um, so check over there um, you'll also find it on the Codemasters blog at codysblog.com um, another thing a lot of you guys have been asking is when pre-orders are going to be open on Steam they are coming very very soon um, trust me it will be worth it um, if uh, any of you guys are watching uh, sort of looking for the best place to pre-order a console version um, if you visit preorder.gridgame.com um, that'll take you to, through to like a Facebook app that we've built um, it'll show you your sort of local retailer for the country that you guys are listed in um, you can click through onto there and you'll be able to pre-order from your uh, from your favorite retailer um, so yeah keep your questions coming in um, we'll be taking some more from the guys from RaceNet after this uh, after this event and I'll hand back over to Mr. Tyser
there you go guys um, that was Live Roots on Dubai I um, hope you liked it a um, couple of questions that you guys have been throwing at us um, uh, one of the um, one of you want one of you want to know how many different customizable options there are in the game I think is that best for you yeah I've not done the maths on this I'm gonna blame someone else for the maths if it's totally incorrect <laughs> uh, but if we so it was one of the guys did this and before we kind of even added like wheels and numbers or sponsors with all the paint options we've got with all the kind of the, the paint colors we've got there's kind of six billion possible combinations of stuff you can do so if you add then in the wheels and numbers of sponsors as well, it's even more. So there's plenty that you can get. Uh, you six, can do, billion. six billion. Six One yeah. for every person on the One planet. One for every person on the planet. So everybody could go out and buy Grid 2 and drive a different looking car. I would like to bet five pounds that almost everybody uses either the dragon livery that we have yeah. or the dinosaur livery that we have though. Fact. <laughs> in, in pink. In pink, yeah. Um, uh, a little bit of news that's been going on today. Obviously, we've had uh, a lot of press in sort of talking about multiplayer and uh, they've, they've actually been hands-on and playing it, so I know it's quite difficult for us to be able to sort of give you guys that experience. Um, if you pop along to your favourite website, there's a good chance that one of those will uh, have a preview up. Um, IGN are worth taking a look at. Um, Polygon have also took a very good uh, sort of in-depth look um, at Grid 2's multiplayer. And uh, Games Radar have a really good video, which is worth a watch. Um, although, don't watch it now. Um, because while well, you're watching the Good Tea live stream, um, another question that's uh, it, it's, it's kept popping up, but now we can, I suppose, finally sort of broach the subject of uh, different game modes that we've got. Um, there's two questions to this. The first question is from me, and that's is it pronounced Toge or Togue? Toge for me. It, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to go with that. Well, 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 I'm, from, I'm from Birmingham, so I'll say Tongue. <laughs> tongue. <laughs> Uh, right, the actual question that was from one of the viewers, um, they want to know uh, if it's going to be in the game um, yeah. and if it's going to be in multiplayer and sort of how will you play it? So, yeah, it's in multiplayer. Um, it's more of a, with Toge on the multiplayer side, you'll be paired with somebody in your lobby, so, because it's the one-on-one -on -one race. If there's an odd number of people in the lobby, the one person will be kind of posted against the AI. Uh, and it's, it's a simple kind of one-on-one -on -one race for that. So yeah, you'll be paired with somebody in your online lobby. If you're the unfortunate one who you know, doesn't get paired with another human player, you'll be paired against one of the AI. Cool. Um, so right, what we're going to be showing you guys next, um, we're going to be popping over to uh, Algarve um, in one of our GT cars. Um, we're going to be in the McLaren MP4 uh, GT, which I believe is the first time we've ever shown this one. Um, you might have seen a few hints of it over in some of the screenshots, but it's going to be the first time you've seen it in action. Um, Mr. Toyso is going to be taking us for a bit of a race. What we're going to do sort of shortly after, we're going to hit it into replay cam so that you guys can enjoy the uh, the beautiful replay uh, that the game sort of spits out uh, after you've finished racing. Um, if you've got any questions, by all means, keep them coming in. Um, it's worth mentioning that if you're sort of a fan of Grid and this is maybe the first time that you might have even seen us, um, follow us on Twitter, uh, which is twitter.com slash gridgame. Uh, we're also on Facebook as well, which is facebook.com slash gridgame. I'll hand over to Mr. Toyso now. And we'll be back soon.
Okay. There you go, guys. That was the Algarve um, in the McLaren MP4 GT. Um, that's actually one of our pre-order bonuses for the game. Um, like I said earlier, if you guys are sort of, if you want to pre-order the game, um, swing by preorder.gridgame.com. Um, what they'll do when you type that into your address bar, it'll forward you over to sort of our Facebook app. Um, depending what sort of uh, what country you live in, it will bring up a list of all of the different uh, all the different retailers in your area uh, and sort of detail all the different pre-order packs that we've uh, that we've got. Um, so be sure to check out that. Um, also, as well, if you're after sort of a lot more info about the game, um, we have set up like a full wiki page, um, which is on IGN. Um, if you swing by there, you'll be able to find out everything about the tracks, uh, the cars, and all of the clubs that we'd mentioned uh, previously. A um, few questions that have come in sort of while we were chatting. Um, wanted to know what cars uh, were on the track. Um, we've got the Audi R8 GT. Um, there was the Mercedes SLR722 and the McLaren MP4 GT, which we were driving. Uh, on top of that, you also had the McLaren SLS. Mercedes. Mercedes SLS. Sorry, I'm getting my cars mixed up. <laughs> um, also, as well, um, what we're going to be doing, sort of, as the game sort of comes out, to, sort of towards launch, and it's all running, and you guys are playing and sort of enjoying it, and you're gaining fans on RaceNet and everything like that. We really want you guys to sort of get involved with RaceNet on Twitter. We want to know what sort of things you want to see from future challenges. If you've uploaded a cool replay or something like that, we want you to send them over to us. Um, we want we want everything. We want to. You guys are really going to shape uh, sort of what Grid Two is sort of after it's launched. So it's really important that we hear back from you. Um, the best ways of getting in touch from us are over on the our Twitter channel, uh, which is at CM RaceNet. Um, you can also find us on Facebook as well, um, which is facebookcom racenet um, Ben will drop links to those uh, both of those in the chat. Um, we'd also have another question uh, come in, sort of while uh, uh, while I've just been chatting. Um, a few people want to know if split screen uh, is going to feature in Grid Two. Um, we're very pleased to say that it is, so you will be able to play sort of against each other on your couch back at home, the way old school multiplayer, right? Old school, old school multiplayer. <laughs> um, you'll be able to play split screen on the Xbox 360, on the PC, uh, and obviously on the uh, PlayStation Three as well. Um, Ian and Lee, guys, what is a normal day like down in the RaceNet office? Um, I don't get to see you very often. Yeah, yeah. You, you call us down every yeah. so often and we, you have the best chairs in the building by far. But <laughs> I don't know, what's a normal day like for you guys? I don't, normal is, yeah. But yeah there is a normal day. There is a normal day. <laughs> um, so, I mean, because we're on multiple projects at once, it's quite an interesting challenge. Obviously, last year we kind of did showdown f1 2012 and f1 race stars in quick succession mm. managed to focus on grid and grids at the moment it's really busy because we're finishing it off making sure it was all working all good um yeah i kind of think from my perspective it's just coming up with new ideas uh, seeing how the, the players are playing a game working out how we can extend these games out and come up with new features and how we can connect like with the game teams and kind of see where they want to take the game and obviously uh, kind of how we can add to it uh ian's kind of you're the first of getting it all looking good, and yeah, I mean, you're the man who makes it look pretty. Well, yeah, uh, me and uh, Chris Morley, the art director, and the uh, and the art team who are doing a fantastic job with Grid. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. I think, as Lee said, getting to work on multiple projects is, you know, it's quite refreshing sometimes. I think dev cycles on games can be quite long, um, so we get to work on all this sort of different stuff, different art styles. Uh, it's really interesting, uh, and also kind of looking forward to sort of what what the future holds really um, yeah you guys have got you've got something that everyone's been sort of crying out for since yeah, we first launched RaceNet yeah I guess so um, I mean just you know the way the world's moving you know everything's going mobile this kind of whole service driven stuff um, you know games are changing the way you access media is changing and that's uh, something we're really going to be pushing forward with RaceNet going forward yeah I think this is the first time we've kind of added to the game and we've added features that we're really happy with kind of previously it's been very much uh, kind of a game to web thing with kind of very little stats which are all good um, but we've tried to add a lot more to grid this time around I think we've, we've achieved that like the rival systems really really interesting going to connect with new players and then obviously global challenge as well you can get nine new challenges every single week so there's always something to do and then over on RaceNet with kind of the followers kind of idea and you gaining technically online fame for being more successful it's all going to add to this kind of grid to experience and you know you're going to take it away from you so you play 
one night and then you're going to be on the bus in the morning checking out how you're doing see if you lost followers to any of your rivals and then you know exactly what you've got to do when you get back on the, in yeah, the evenings that's the exciting thing it's just the game's with you 24-7 it's something we're really keen to get across with race now and probably for all our future titles and Hopefully. it'll be coming to a mobile app very soon yep yep excellent mobile, tablet, desktop you name it it'll be on it take race net with you everywhere take race net everywhere yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, right, okay. Um, we're coming up to our last event now. Um, what we're going to be doing, uh, we're heading over to Paris um, and the Champ- Champs-Élysées. Did I say that properly? Say, 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 say it in a French accent. Champs-Élysées. That was rubbish. No? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> You've thrown me now, guys. Right, we're heading over to the Champs-Élysées. Um, we're going to be driving in the uh, Koenigsegg. Um, this is a one of our checkpoint events. Um, it's one of the events that you've seen before, although you guys haven't seen this track before. This is the first time it's been shown. I believe this is the first time anybody's seen this track. I don't think we've even showed it to the press yet. Um, so we hope you like it. It's a bit of a tricky race. Um, it's a lot of small, sharp corners. Um, the way that this sort of checkpoint event works, what it is you have to do, you have to get through um, the sort of blue flares. Um, what it'll do is it'll add a time, bo- uh, time bonus um, to your sort of overall time which continues to tick down um, the way that it sort of scores is you can basically it's whoever gets the furthest in yep. um, the mode works exactly the same online um, exactly the same what it does is though it doesn't sort of start you off from a standing start it staggers you all um, which is uh, is quite interesting so you'll you'll have a few mates up in front of you and you'll have a few mates up behind you um, if you get people start overtaking you then you know you're in trouble personally um, my favourite mode in the game your favourite yeah, mode it's good. <laughs> awesome yeah, it's good. right okay um, so we'll head over to Mr Tyson um, this is Paris and the Champs-Élysées in the Koenigsegg
we all let out a very big collective. Ooh, just as he nearly made that last checkpoint. Um, I want to say thank you to Mr. Tyso for being our driver this evening. You may, you are now free to go home. <laughs> Um, guys from RaceNet as well, thank you very much for coming. Cheers. It's been great having you on the stream. A um, couple of different things uh, we just sort of go over. Obviously, that was uh, that was the Champs Elysees uh, in the Koenigsegg that you guys You're just seen. Better, I'm getting, getting better. better. My French is getting much better. Champs Elysees. Champs Obviously, what you guys also seen as well. Um, if you've just tuned in, where have you been all night? Um, You'll be able to watch the stream back uh, a little bit later on on Twitch uh, TV on our page. Um, we'll also be sort of sending it up over onto YouTube shortly as well. So make sure you keep hold of, uh, keep an eye on our Twitter account, which is at Grid Game. Uh, we'll have all the information sort of up on there and links when they're available. Um, this evening, obviously, we've covered all of the uh, multiplayer stuff. It was great to have you guys along to sort of explain that. We really hope everybody sort of liked what they saw. Um, it's it's great to be able to talk about it because we've we've been quiet for a very long time. Yeah, I mean. Follow up on Facebook and Twitter, all this sort of stuff as well. So, any questions for him over? Yeah, yeah. If, if you have got any questions for the RaceNet team, um, send them over to at CM RaceNet. Um, if you want to, you can also post them onto our Facebook wall for RaceNet as well, which is facebook.com slash CM RaceNet. Um, like I said to you guys earlier, we really want to really sort of make make RaceNet work and make it the best it can be. But for that, obviously, we need you guys. We want to know what you like, what you don't like. Um, what sort of new ideas obviously we know once the game's out there you guys are going to be doing things that we hadn't even considered um, so please just keep sending them over uh, we want to see everything that you guys have got um, so yeah really look forward thank you very much guys for coming in um, also as well uh, if you want to pre-order the grid you like what you've seen tonight um, visit pre-order.gridgame.com um, that'll take you over to our Facebook app uh, where you'll be able to pre-order the game from your nearest sort of local retailer both online and sort of high street stores um, we're doing another live stream next week as well. Uh, we'd love to know what you guys want to hear uh, and see um, in our next week's live stream. We can pretty much show you most of the game now. We've got a few things hidden up our sleeve. Um, but yeah, if you've got something that you want to see, uh, just tweet us over to at Grid Game. Um, again, post them onto our Facebook wall, which is facebook.com slash Grid Game. Um, something new as well, which we didn't cover earlier, um, which we're sort of adding to RaceNet. Uh, before, when you wanted to sign up to RaceNet, it was something you had to do for the website, and yeah. we know it's a bit of a chore. It, it, there's a lot of different systems like RaceNet where you have to go to the website and tie your account to this, and that. we're trying to make it a little bit easier. Um, what have we done to make that easier, sign up to RaceNet when the grid is out? It's all in-game now, so you'll be able to sign up to RaceNet in-game. If you've already got an account, you'll be able to log in, so you'll, when you buy Grid2, and you start playing, just log in with your RaceNet account details, you're ready to go. If you haven't got a RaceNet account, uh, then you'll be able to create one in-game direct. So apart from the rivals features, the global challenge features, the followers features, there's also the ability to sign up in-game now as well. Awesome. Guys, thank you again for coming in. Cheers. Round of applause for our driver. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> ben, Ben, take your headphones off and say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming guys, um, we've been the Codemasters community team uh, here with the RaceNet team, um, it's been great to have you along, hope you like what you've seen and we'll see you next week.